New York, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men, and 924 leading retail stores from coast to coast, present the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character of Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes is portrayed by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by Alfred Shirley, and the dramatizations are by Edith Miser. Winter's certainly here, Dr. Watson. There are snowdrifts three to four feet high piled outside your door. Uh, let me take your galoshes, Mr. Harris, while you warm your feet by the fire. Mm, boy, this feels good. I think I'll just dig in here for the winter, Doctor. Well, why don't you? And here is Sherlock Holmes' adventure every evening. Say, come to think of it, th that would have the good old Arabian Nights beat all hollow. Thank you, Mr. Harris. A very neat compliment indeed. Well, Dr. Watson, which of your many Sherlock Holmes adventures have you decided to tell us this evening? Well, to tell the truth, I was... Uh, in a quandary as to where to begin until I received a communication by this afternoon's post. Oh, here it is. Thank you. Oh. Wedding announcement. Gloria Waverly Pembroke to Juan Fernando Ferguson. Say, that's a strange combination of names. Juan Fernando Ferguson, Dr. Yes, uh, Juan Fernando Ferguson was the victim in the case of the Sussex Vampire, although he was hardly a year old at the time. The case of the Sussex Vampire. That sounds promising. Just what is a vampire, Dr. Watson? That's the exact same question that Holmes put to me at the beginning of this case. Oh, oh, but before we go into the subject, suppose you say a few well-chosen words on another subject. A subject we're very pleased to hear about on this program. I thank you, Dr. Watson. A few words that give you the whole story in a nutshell are these. Clippercraft clothes are the best values in suits, top coats, and overcoats you've ever seen. Now, you have every right to say to me, how do you explain that, Mr. Harris? Tell us what makes it so. Well, explaining Clippercraft's great values is simple as ABC. They're planned values. They take advantage of all the ingenuity their makers can bring to bear. The Clippercraft plan concentrates the buying power of 924 leading stores across the nation, making tremendous savings in manufacturing and distribution costs. You get the savings this brilliant plan makes possible. What's more, you get them at your own local independent store, at the store you can trust. Until you see them, you wouldn't believe such beautifully tailored suits were possible at only $40 and $45. Such handsome top coats and overcoats at only $40. Clippercraft values are so downright remarkable. We urge you to compare them with clothes selling for many dollars more. Now, Dr. Watson, to return to the case of the Sussex vampire. It was a blustery afternoon, Mr. Harris, uh, early in November in the year, uh, let me see, somewhere early in the 1900s. Well, at any rate, I had returned to our rooms in Baker Street to find Holmes standing before the huge reference books he had compiled for himself, the volume V in his hands and a quizzical look on his face. Ah, there you are, Watson. You look a trifle windblown. Well, it doesn't take any brilliant deduction on your part to ascertain that fact, my dear Holmes. What a gale. It fairly tears the coat off your back. I had to chase my hat almost the entire length of Kensington Gardens. Oh, I'm completely exhausted. Oh, nonsense. A little strenuous exercise is good for you. Oh, yes, then why don't you indulge in it more frequently? I don't need to. My waistline isn't becoming unmanageable. Well, there's nothing, nothing matter with my waistline. A, a bit more substantial than yours, perhaps, but it's... A, Watson, it's a... Watson, stop your spluttering. I haven't time to listen. We have something more serious on hand. Oh, I say, uh, a new case? I haven't decided. Watson, in your own invaluable opinion, just what is a vampire? Oh, I thought you didn't have time for any tittle-tattle. I haven't. My question's entirely serious. A vampire? Oh, well, a vampire is supposed to be a sort of walking corpse that lives by sucking human blood and can only be held in its grave by a, a stake driven through its heart. It's a purely legendary figure like uh, werewolves and uh, sea serpents. Exactly, a childish bugaboo, pure rubbish. Yes, just the result of a lot of ignorant peasants frightening each other. 
Their imaginations run away with them. <laughs> Hocus pocus like that could never become current in England. No? Superstition's a difficult thing to stamp out. Read this letter. Oh, what is it? Uh, the hysterical ravings of some neurotic female? On the contrary, it's a business letter from Morrison, Morrison and Dodd, one of the oldest and most reputable law firms in the city. Read it. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, in Re Vampires. Sir, our client, Mr. Robert Ferguson of Ferguson and Muirhead, tea brokers of Mincing Lane, has made some inquiry from us concerning vampires. As our firm specializes upon the assessment of machinery, <laughs> the matter hardly comes within our purview, and we have therefore recommended Mr. Ferguson to lay the matter before you. Hmm. The question now is, does it come within our purview either? Well, we seem to have been switched into Grimm's fairy tale. We may as well expect a witch on a broomstick to come flying down the chimney. Eh? Oh, well, anything's better than stagnation, eh, Watson? Besides, stamping out superstition's one of my hobbies. Uh, now what? Come in, come in. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Hudson. A letter for you, sir. Came by the light post. Hmm. From Mr. Robert Ferguson, Cheeseman's, Lamberley. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson, thank you. Uh, don't mention it, sir. Oh, this Mr. Ferguson, he doesn't seem to have lost any time in getting in touch with you, Holmes. No, the matter must be fairly urgent. Cheeseman's, Lamberley. Where is Lamberley, Watson? Uh, uh, in Sussex, south of Horsham. Hmm. Read the letter, there's a good fellow. Oh, really, Holmes? You're becoming more indolent every day. Rubbish. Just because I sit here relaxed with my eyes closed doesn't mean I'm not mentally alert. But get on with the letter, get on with it. Well, wait a minute, can't you? Wait till I get it out of the envelope. Uh, there we are. My dear Mr. Holmes, I have been recommended to you by my lawyers, but the matter is so delicate I, I hardly know how to explain it to you. Some five years ago, I married a South American lady, the daughter of a Peruvian merchant. She's a very beautiful and most loving wife, but I cannot help feeling that there are sides of her character which I can never explore or understand. A few months ago, she began to show some curious traits quite alien to her ordinarily sweet and gentle disposition. This is my second marriage. I have one son by my first wife, charming and affectionate, but a cripple. Twice my wife was caught in the act of assaulting this poor lad in the most brutal and unprovoked way. That was a small matter, however, compared with her conduct to her own child, a beautiful boy just under one year of age. The story, if true, is almost too horrible to mention. One day, one afternoon last week, I, I heard my older boy screaming upstairs. Almost immediately, the baby's nurse burst into the room and begged me to follow her as my wife was in one of her spells. Let me go! Let me go! You're hurting me! Oh! Oh, Mr. Ferguson, sir, come quick. It's your wife. She's took bad again. What? She's beating the boy. Oh, hurry, sir. She'll kill him. Good heavens, this is dreadful. Come along, nurse. Oh, you're twisting my arm. Oh, oh, stop hitting me. Stop. I'm coming, Jackie. I'm coming. Tina! Tina, let the boy go. I say, let the boy go. Father, look. Father, she hit me. Look there. Why, you've raised a great wealth on his arm. This is too much, Tina. Are you going crazy? I hate him. I hate him, the little beast. After all, Tina, he is my son and a cripple. How can you be so inhuman? It is because I love you. Don't you understand? I would sacrifice myself rather than break your heart. You must believe me. You must trust me. Yes, but what do you want me to believe? I... I cannot tell, but you must trust. After all, actions speak louder than words. How can I believe you love me when I see you torturing my son? I hate him. Take him away. I will kill him next Stop time. Stop it. You're delirious, that's it. You're delirious. Don't you think so, nurse? It's worse than that, sir. She's possessed of the devil. She and Dolores, that black-haired maid of hers. Dolores practices strange rites up in her room. She's a voodoo, I tell you. Oh, nonsense. This is going too far. Has the whole house turned into bedlam? Really, nurse, Dolores is from Latin America. Just because she does things you don't understand doesn't make her a witch. It's all quite easily explained. There's something going on in this house you can't explain so easy, no matter how you try. What do you mean? What I saw in the nursery this afternoon, just before she started into beating Jackie. Oh, don't tell. You promised not to. Oh, for the love of heaven, don't tell. Tina, be quiet. What did you find, nurse? I was out in the back hall, warming the baby's bottle. When all of a sudden I heard a loud cry, like he was in pain. I ran in to find out what the matter was. 
And there she was, leaning over the baby. I screamed. She looked up, and there was blood on her face. She's a vampire. That's what she is, a vampire. <laughs> Thoroughly unsavoury, Watson. Go on with the letter. Ever since then, the nurse has guarded the child day and night. And day and night, the silent, watchful mother seems to be lying in wait as a wolf for a lamb. For the rest, she confines herself to her own room and will see none of us. I know this will all sound most fantastic to you, Mr. Holmes. Vampirism in the heart of Sussex. And yet I beg of you to take it seriously. If you would only come down and investigate the matter, a child's life and a man's sanity may depend upon it. Yours faithfully, Robert Ferguson. Well, Watson, what do you make of it? Well, it all sounds like a nightmare to me. Maybe the man himself is demented. Possibly, Watson. Possibly. Suppose we visit Lamberley tomorrow afternoon to see if we can get to the bottom of this strange case. I've always wanted to meet a vampire. <laughs> Ah, yes, that must be our client, Mr. Ferguson, waiting at the other end of the platform. You mean the long, slab-sided man with loose limbs and a splendid back? Well, he looks prematurely aged. An experience like this would add years to any man's looks. Ah, Mr. Robert Ferguson, I believe. Uh, yes, Mr. Holmes, I received your telegram. I can't begin to express my gratitude. Quite, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Oh, how do you do, sir? I uh, believe we've met before, Dr. Watson. Oh, really? I... Aren't you the same, Watson, who played rugby for Blackheath while I was uh, three-quarter for Richmond? Bobby Ferguson, why, of course. Yes. I'm delighted to see you again, old fellow. <laughs> i never forget the day you threw me over the ropes and into the crowd at Old Deer Park. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, time has changed us both. Hey. Whoever would have thought we would meet again under such tragic circumstances. Uh, but come, uh, the carriage is waiting over here. So, Watson, you played rugby, eh? No, indeed he did. And a splendid athlete he was, too. And see that. You're full of surprises, Watson. There are unexplored possibilities about you. Oh, now you're pulling my leg, Holmes. Ah, here's the carriage. Uh, will you get in first, Mr. Holmes? Thank you. Now, Watson. I do. That's right. And uh, tuck this rug in around your knees, will you? Uh, the wind is getting rather brisk. Looks as though we'd have a storm before night. All right, Wilson. Let's get along. Now then, Mr. Ferguson, if you don't object to a few personal questions... No, 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 anything, anything. What can I do? Uh, I can't go to the police with such a story. And yet I must protect the children. Is it madness? Is it something in the blood? Have you ever had a similar case? Oh, for the love of heaven, give me some advice. I'm at my wit's end. Gently, Mr. Ferguson, gently. Now, just pull yourself together and give me a few clear answers. I can assure you that I am very far from being at my wit's end. First of all, have you spoken to your wife since the, uh, the discovery? No. No, Mr. Holmes. She refuses to see me. Her maid, Dolores, who's been with her since she was a child, is the only person she will see. I gather that you did not know your wife well at the time of your marriage. Only a few weeks. Then your wife's character would be better known to her maid than to you. I suppose so. This unhappy lady has appeared to assault both the children, her own baby and your son? Yes. She attacked Jackie again just day before yesterday. But the assaults take different forms, do they not? She has beaten your own son. Once with a stick and once very savagely with her hands. Is the lady jealous by nature? Well, she is a Latin American. She has a fiery, tropical nature. Quite. But the crippled boy, he's 15, I understand, and probably very bright mentally since his body isn't as active as other boys. Did he give any explanation of these assaults? No, he declared there was no reason. Were they good friends at other times? No. No, there was never any love between them. And yet you claim he's affectionate. Well, I've never seen a more devoted son. He's absorbed in everything I say or do. Hmm. Most interesting. Were the attacks on the baby and your son at the same period? In the uh, first case, yes. It was as if she were seized by some frenzy and had vented her rage on both. Mm. In the second, it was only Jackie who suffered. 
and possibly because ne nurse kept a strict watch over the baby. I see. Ah, but here we are, Mr. Holmes. Cheesemans. The old houses in this part of the country are still named after their original builders. Yes, I see a rebus of a cheese and a man on the ancient tiles that line the porch. The middle section of your house is very old, Mr. Ferguson. Yes, uh, the wings are newer. Very interesting building with its towering Tudor chimneys and its lichen-spotted roofs. If you will come in, sir, I can offer you some refreshment. That will be most welcome. My bones are chilled. The wind's rising. That storm can't be far off. Look at those clouds. Well, it reminds one of the right of the Valkyries, eh, Ferguson? Oh, come in, Watson. Come in and shut the door. All right, all right. That's better. Now, if you'll just... Oh, oh Dolores. Si, senor. Dolores, uh, bring some sandwiches, will you? And uh, have the windows shuttered. It looks as though we're in for a storm. Si, senor. I shut them after I order sandwiches. That is your wife's maid, I take it? Yes. Handsome girl, but a bit primitive, eh? Ah, I see your iron fire screen is dated 1670. Oh, yes, yes. We've got a great mixture of dates in this room. The uh, half-paneled walls may well have belonged to the original yeoman of the 17th century. And the watercolors hung along the lower part are obviously modern. And the collection of weapons and utensils nailed against the yellow plaster. Ah, those are the oldest of the lot. Inca Indian relics, I believe. Uh, no one knows how old they really are. I see. My wife brought them from Peru. This uh, quiver, for instance. Most enlightening. Most enlightening. Hello. <laughs> Hello, here comes Carlo. Well, 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 how's the boy? Come here, boy. Come nice here. looking spaniel, Ferguson. <laughs> Hello. What's the matter with the dog's hind legs? Oh, that's what's puzzled the vet. It seems to be a sort of paralysis. Spinal meningitis, he thought. Come here, boy. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, it seems to be passing off. He'll be all right soon, won't you, Carl? Won't you, old boy? Won't you, boy? He knows we're talking about him. Look at him thump his tail. Uh, Did this uh, paralysis come on suddenly? In a single night. How long ago? Several months. Very remarkable. Very suggestive. What do you see in it, Mr. Holmes? The confirmation of my suspicions. What are your suspicions, Mr. Holmes? It's just an intellectual puzzle to you, but it's life and death to me. My wife's a victim of some terrible curse. My child is in danger. Oh, don't play with me, Mr. Holmes. It's all too horrible. Calm yourself, my dear fellow. Keep a stiff upper lip. You may have to bear still greater pain, I fear, but I'll try to spare you as much as possible. I hope to have a solution before I leave this house tonight. Ah, the storm has broken at last. I say, listen to the rain. Yes. I got the shutters closed just in time. Thunder, by Jove, at this time of the year. It's a thoroughly bad night. Sandwiches, senor. Oh, yes. Uh, come in, Dolores, and uh, uh, put them there on the table. <coughs> careful, careful. Why, oh, you almost dropped the tray. What's the matter, Dolores? Why, oh, you look as if you'd seen a ghost. I... I frightened. Listen. You hear that storm? It the great dogs of death howling round this house. My mistress, she very sick. She no take food. I frightened to stay with her without doctor. Oh, I should be glad if I could be of service. Would your mistress see Dr. Watson? I take him. I not ask leave. She need doctor. Oh, then I'll come at once. You're sure you're not afraid? My wife may be really dangerous. Oh, rubbish, Ferguson. I can take care of myself. What you've a right to expect in clothes costing many dollars more is yours in Clippercraft at just a fraction of what you'd expect to pay. You get long wear that results from fine materials and good workmanship. You get good taste. Correct styling is worn by the world's best-dressed men. And you get comfort and perfect fit from skilled designing and precision tailoring. American production genius applied to the making of clothes makes this possible. That and the unique Clippercraft plan concentrating the buying power of 924 of the nation's leading stores from coast to coast. You get the savings that result from this group buying at your own local independent store, at the store you can trust. Clippercraft suits are only $40 and $45. 
Clippercraft top coats and overcoats are only $40. Selling expensive clothes at inexpensive low prices at the nation's finest independent stores is the great big idea behind the Clippercraft plan. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. The leading stores in the metropolitan area that bring you Clippercraft clothes are Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th Street, Manhattan, Abraham and Strauss, Brooklyn, the Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark, Newark, New Jersey, and the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue, Jamaica. These great, courteous, and friendly stores are proud to add their names to that of Clippercraft in the label of your suit, top coat, sports jacket, and overcoat. I wish Watson would come back. He's been gone over half an hour. He's all right. If anything had gone astray, I should have heard it. I've been listening. Oh, so that's what you've been doing. You were so quiet, I thought you were dozing. Wait. There's something now. Listen. I can't hear anything but the rain. It's coming this way. Hear it? Oh, yes, yes, now I do. That's Jackie's cane, poor fellow. He's coming in here. Mm, it's the spine that's weak, I can tell by the limp. Sightable, too. Shh, here he is. Oh, Father. Father, I didn't know you were back. I, I'd have been here to meet you. I thought you were out in the storm. Oh, I'm so oh, glad to gently, see you. Gently, gently, Jackie, please. <laughs> Don't hug so tight. There, there, now, that's better. We have company. This is Mr. Holmes. Hello, Jackie. Sherlock Holmes, the detective? That's right. Oh. Now that I've met your eldest son, Mr. Ferguson, may I make the acquaintance of the baby? Oh, I certainly, Mr. Holmes, certainly. And just wait till you see him. How anyone could have the heart to hurt him. The most beautiful baby. So that's it. Hmm. What did you say? What's the matter? Why are you looking out the window like that? What do you see? The solution of this crime. Yes, but the windows are shuttered. Quite. Well, I... I may say you gave me a start. I'm sorry. Oh, not at all. My nerves are a bit on edge. What with the... this situation and... and the storm. Jackie, uh, go upstairs. That's a good fellow. And uh, ask Nurse to bring the baby down here, will you? Yes, Father. Has it ever occurred to you, Mr. Ferguson, that this, uh, this story about your wife's peculiarities might have been made up by the nurse to get revenge on her for some slight? Oh, impossible. In the first place, I saw her beat the boy with my own eyes. Yes, but the other... Oh, no, no. Unfortunately, I feel that must be the truth, too. Nurse is a good woman with plenty of common sense. She's always been very fond of my wife and the baby. I'm sure she'd never have told me if she'd not felt it were necessary to protect the child. Yes, I thought so. However, we were bound to consider every possibility. You never know. Help! Help! She's killing him! Hello, what's up? Hurry, Holmes! Hurry! Coming, old chap, coming. Oh, this is terrible. What's up? What's happened? Mrs. Ferguson. Her bedroom door was open. She saw the boy go into the nursery. Quick as a flash, she was out of her bed and into the other room. Oh, it's awful. There was Jackie standing beside the crib playing with the baby when she comes in, raging like a tiger, shoves him aside, snatches up the baby and dashes into her own room before you can win. Oh, quick. We must get the baby away from her. The door's locked. We can't get in. Break it down, then. Help me, Watson. One. Two. <laughs> Stop! Get out of the way, Dolores. You know, take one step or I shoot. Tina, look at her. She's got the baby. In heaven's name, don't take the baby away from me. Please, don't take him. Stand back, you know, not touch her. Go ahead and shoot. I'm going to save my baby. Easy, Ferguson, easy. Dolores, would you mind pointing that revolver in some other direction? I know your intentions are good, but your nerves are a trifle unsteady. Look at my wife, the murderess. Mr. Ferguson. It seems to me that your wife is a very good and a very ill-used woman. How can you stand there and say that? Look at her. Blood on her lips. She's killing him. 
Which, has it ever occurred to you that a wound may be sucked for some other purpose than to draw blood from it? What do you mean? To draw poison from it. Your wife has been risking her own life to save your child. Poison? Quite. The South American household, there's weapons on the walls. When I saw that empty quiver, I was sure. If the child were pricked by one of those arrows dipped in curare or some other devilish drug, it would mean death if the venom were not sucked out. You mean Tina's not... I see, of course. Why, it's quite obvious. And the dog. If one were going to use such a poison, wouldn't it be wise to first try it on the dog to make sure it hadn't lost its power? Oh, yes. But who could have done it? I don't understand. If I tell you, I must wound you very deeply in another direction. Oh, no. No, you must not tell him. You must Darling, not. darling, what does it matter as long as you're cleared? Don't you understand? Nothing else matters. Oh, Robert. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Your wife knew how much you loved your other son. She was afraid it would break your heart. Jackie? My Jackie. Oh, Robert. You must not be sad. He's jealous, just a child. You will get over it. Yes. Yes, we'll... We'll help him. Together. Oh, my darling, I'm so glad it wasn't you. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, there, there, darling. Don't. Don't. Come, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Your work is finished. They no longer need you. Yes, but, uh, Holmes, uh... Uh, don't you think we ought to... And Dolores is right. Come along, Watson. At this particular moment, we're decidedly de troll. Why, that's a pretty harrowing story, Dr. Watson. Did Jackie recover his mental balance? Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Harris. They sent him around the world with a good tutor, sea air, marvellous for adolescent nerves. Yes, Doctor, but how did Holmes know it was the boy? You remember his saying he saw the solution of the crime in the shuttered window pane? Well, Mr. Harris, what he really saw was the reflection of the boy's face when his father affectionately mentioned the baby. Holmes caught a glimpse of such jealousy and cruel hatred as one seldom sees on a human face. Well, Dr. Watson, that certainly is a thrilling story, and you certainly know how to tell it. To paraphrase my friend Sherlock Holmes, elementary, my dear Mr. Harris, <laughs> elementary. <laughs> and what story are we to have next week, Dr. Watson? Well, next week, I think I'll tell you how Holmes and I spent the Christmas holidays at Penn's Dragon Castle and became involved with a ghostly lady in white. The honor of the Nevilles, and a Father Christmas who, quite unexpectedly, sang bass. The makers of Clipper Craft Clothes and 924 leading stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes is produced and directed by Basil Lochran, with special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Lives are lost needlessly every year when people die of tuberculosis. You do your part to prevent tuberculosis when you buy and use Christmas seals. And be sure to do your Christmas mailing early. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Adventure of the Christmas Bride. If you'd like to attend the Sherlock Holmes broadcasts in New York, see your local Clippercraft dealer, and he'll tell you how to obtain your tickets. Largest network serving more than 400.